be behind me. There we go, bud. Hey everyone, this is Mary over here at Images on the Page. So, I haven't really been posting videos because I've been pretty crazy busy. And today I'm actually going to be doing a haul video. Because me and one of my best friends, Allison, actually went up on a road trip up to Canada and to Toronto. Eventually to see the Niagara Falls, but... We were in Toronto for like four days and of course me being me I had to stop at a couple bookstores one I actually planned on and one I just happened upon and this is Lolly and he is feeling very attention hungry because I've been gone for nine days so you get to see his adorableness actually in video because he usually hates this because he usually can't get him in my videos at all so the first bookstore I well the bookstore I actually planned on stopping at was one of um, the oldest LGBTQIA bookstores. It was in a really interesting part of like Old Town, Toronto, I believe. They had some really cool pictures. I might show them up here. Well, here's a picture of what the bookstore looked like from the outside. Um, and then I only got three books there just because I didn't it was really, really hot when we were there, surprisingly. It was like 80-something Fahrenheit, not Celsius, because I don't know what that is, but it was awful. Oh, I did not plan on that. I had like jeans and like t-shirts. It was just too hot. It was like shorts and tank top weather. But so I got three books there, one of which, I mean, I could have gotten here, but I was there, so I got it. It is... um all out it's this short story collection you probably heard a bit about it on booktube i know it's been talked about a little um by it's just like short stories about teens throughout the ages who are somewhat on the lgbtqia spectrum in one way or another and i've just really been kind of wanting to have this and i just keep putting it off because i was just like well it's a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. Well, I was there. It's an independent bookstore, so I was like, hey, I'm never going to be there again. Probably. I mean, I might go back eventually. And I'm help supporting a local business. That is my validation for all these books. I spent way too much money on books. It's like my the most things I bought while on my trip, and no one is surprised by that. But anyway, this is all out. I'm really excited to read it. The next one I got is also a short story collection. I'm not usually one for those, but I don't know, it just looked really interesting. It's called Dates 2. Um, I really like the cover of this one. They have a Dates 1, but I went with this one for some reason. This is also um, an anthology of queer historical stories. And so, um, but this is done in graphic novel form. So they're actually like, obviously drawn. So I thought that was really interesting. And then the last one I got, which is one I've been really wanting, um, but I just keep putting it off because it was just really expensive. But again, the validation of you, it being a local bookstore, helping independent bookstores. Anyway, this is the book. It's called Full Metal Indi Indigiqueer. Um, I've just really been interested in this. It's a book of poetry. And it says, the back says, this poetry collection focused on a hybridized indige queer trickster character named Zoa who brings together the, agor the organic and the technologic to re-beautify and remember queer I in I can't say that last word. But yeah, so I thought this was just really interesting and it's kind of like that mix between old world, new world. So I was just kind of really excited to read it. Also, the girl who I talked to was super helpful, super friendly. All, all the staff there were friendly. Um, and she also was more than willing to give me some recommendations about more um, queer indigenous people, artists. Um, like there's the name of the cover artist. Um, and I'll link all this information down below. But yeah. Fortunately, I did not have a chance to go see either I think either of their exhibits, well, one of them was an artist who might have had an exhibit, and I didn't have time to go see that because we were very busy. But I'm hoping to look up some of their artwork soon. 
Now, the second bookstore we went to was one we just happened upon. We were walking in, so we were basically in, like, the heart of Chinatown in Toronto. So you hit the Super 8, which is above a Chinese mall. Super nice motel. Like, if you think a Super 8 is bad, like, this was a really nice hotel. It's one of the nicer hotels I've stayed at. Um, but so we kind of were walking around. There's this really cool place called Graffiti Alley, which is more than one alley. I mean, it is, like, one really long alley. It just keeps going, but then it's, like, all these little alleys parallel to it also have graffiti on them. Super pretty. The, some of the art in there is just, like, phenomenal that people can do this with spray cans. Like, I can't imagine. I mean, I can, but, like, oh, my goodness. And it also intersects with this place called Kensington Market, which is just, like, this kind of... I don't want to say clash, because that makes it sound bad, but, like, this combination of all these different cultures and vibes and it was just really cool we were walking around there trying to look for something to eat and of course we stumbled upon it's called the beguiling um it's a solely comic in like manga bookstore so they only had like graphic novels comics manga like that was it nothing like a normal novel which was really cool and it was like a pretty big place it went like into three buildings um, and of course I spent even more there, I spent way too much, but they are really cool, check them out, they have a wide variety of things, different like diversity things, they had a couple of, they had like a cool stand about stuff done by local Canadian authors and artists, and so that was really awesome to find, I love those that's like my favorite thing when traveling is when you have a day and I always rec I would highly recommend this is if you kind of give yourself a day where you have a couple small things planned because like Graffiti Alley and Kensington Market was right by our hotel so it was literally like a five minute walk to the Graffiti Alley and we just walked on the market and then walked down the alley and we just continued walking around because we didn't want to go back to our hotel at noon and we just found like this really cool place to eat we found this bookstore like you can find some of the coolest things that way i feel like when you don't 100 percent plan everything because then yeah we went to go see the big tourist attractions but like and those were cool like don't get me wrong those are really awesome but i like the littler things because it says more i think about the city and that might just be me anyway long ran over um like I said, I got a lot here. I'm not actually showing everything because I got some for my friends and I don't want them to see it before I give it to them. The first one is been going around booktube and I was so happy I found it. I mean, I could have got it on Amazon, but once again, local bookstore, never going to probably be back to Toronto. Well, highly unlikely I'll be back to Toronto, at least anytime soon. So I was like, eh, I might as well. And I had the money. So I got, finally got check please. Anyway, this has been going around booktube. Everyone's really excited about it. I know it was a webcomic, and then she self-published. I think this has actually been... Is this... I'm going to say this is the one that's been picked up by, like, a publisher. But anyway, so yeah, it's, like, pretty big. It's really hefty. It's hardcover, really nice. But yeah, so I finally got it, finally got to read it, or finally going to read it. I haven't gotten a chance to. I got home yesterday, and I did nothing yesterday. I didn't, I mean, I, I literally unpacked my bag, but I didn't put any of the stuff in my bag away, so it's just sitting in our living room, taking up space. But yeah, super excited. The next one I got is one I've already read, but I had to get it because I do want to own them as hardcover. It's Fence, so this is the first volume. Um, I talked about this, I read this in August, I read the entire series of what was out, um, and I don't actually have my August wrapped up posted yet, I'll post that eventually, because there's some really cool books that I read that I would really like to tell you guys about, but anyway, so, I was there, it was there, and I bought it, this is one of the ones that was on that display of, um, done by, like, local Canadian authors and artists, it's called um, Child Soldiers When Boys and Girls Are Used in War. And I'm, I'm a big fan of like using graphic novels and comics to tell kind of nonfiction historical ways because it's just a really interesting way and it helps you, at least for me, it helps me connect better with the story because it's very on the page. It's not clinical in any way. It's not just like a whole bunch of numbers like, oh, 
I don't know how many people went to the war, this many people died, like that. It gives me a character or characters to connect to. And I know this is probably going to break my heart. I mean, obviously, it's in the title. Like, when kids go to war, like, come on, it's in the title. But I just, I was super interested in it. And like I said, I love kind of like, and I don't know if this is nonfiction or not, but like things that are like that, that tell you more about history in a new way. The next one I got, it's called Spectacle. Um, it's about this, it says just like this practical engineer Anna works as a psychic in the Samson Brothers Circus. She doesn't believe in anything supernatural until her twin sister Kat is murdered and comes back as a very demanding ghost. And that just sounds like really fun, um, a recipe for some hijinks and arguments and awesome stuff. Also the art is super The last one I got, um, it's called Wayward. The cover just looked really cool. Um, the synopsis is Rory Lane is trying to start a new life when she reunites with her mother in Japan. But ancient creatures lurking in the shadows of Tokyo sent something hidden deep within her, threatening everything she holds dear. Can she unlock the secrets of her power before it's too late? And it's like the only fantasy-ish supernatural like, comic. I don't often read those, weirdly enough, even though it's like my favorite book genre. But so I thought I'd give this a try. Once again, the cover was really cool. I didn't know if I would ever be there again. And this looks like it's a obviously a series, which means I have to find it somewhere. There's also these cool, there's like um, a glossary in the back, with like the different creatures and stuff. So yeah. So that was my book haul from Canada. I would highly recommend going to, well even in your own city, just like traveling around and seeing if you can find like little hidden bookstore gems, but Toronto was also awesome. I mean it's gigantic and there's so many people. I'm going to recommend driving, but if you ever get a chance to go, I would probably highly recommend it. But until the next video, ta-ta for now!